Okay, I'm just going to be doing a project now where I take the Behringer X-Touch contr DAW controller and connect it physically to the Behringer X-Touch extender, which is going to give me an additional eight tracks of DAW control uh, for my sonar cakewalk sonar installation. This is what the units look like. Obviously, it's two separate units, as you can see. We have two pieces. And the object of this modification is to remove this panel and this side panel and join the devices together. There are videos online right now, but they're not very clear, not easy to see, although I'm thankful for the people that did post previously. Okay, so the first, what I've done here is just turn the devices around with the sides that we're gonna join together facing out. You can see there are three screws on each side here. All of those, all, each of those three screws need to be removed on both of those. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll show you the results in just a minute. And there is one side removed and I'll do the other unit now. Okay, as you can see, I've removed the three screws from both devices, the X-Touch and the X-Touch extender. So the side panels are now off. I believe these screws that we see right here are gonna come into play later to attach the two devices. But I'm now gonna move on to the next step. Okay, the next step, was to take the three screws out from underneath this lip right here. I'll show you that in one second. Okay, so that's the front edge of the unit right there, and I removed three small screws from there. I'll get those over here on the table. And then uh, lastly, you need to take out the three screws along the back of the unit, which I'll show you in one second. I believe it's this screw this screw and this screw. You can't see them really well. There, there's one right here, there's one right here, and there's one right here. Once you have these three screws out along with the three that came out from the front panel, we have to separate the top of the unit from the base of the unit, but we have to do so carefully because there are cables that are connected underneath and we don't want to tear those off or otherwise wreck them in any way. So after having removed the three screws from the rear of the unit, I noticed that I also had to remove this side as well. So once removing this side, you need to remove the screws from both side panels. There's the screws right below where they've been taken out. And then we're gonna come over to here and we're gonna remove these two screws, which will then allow us to lift the top of the unit carefully off, separate it, and I believe attach the two units together. Okay, I'm at the stage now where most have advised that you actually separate the cables underneath the unit, which as you can see, it's kind of a tight squeeze here, but there's some ribbon cables that connect to the board and the top. And some people online have recommended taking those cables off, but I'm gonna to attempt to uh, connect the two units without doing so. So on the, on the left side of the main X-Touch controller, I'm gonna remove these two screws, then slide this chassis over to it and reconnect the screws. So as you can see, I've attached the screws from the base of one unit. Something that most people didn't mention in the videos that I'd seen prior to this is that once you attach this right here like this, then when you put the side back on, this panel, which normally has some screws going through it, winds up um, just kind of sitting above the heads of these screws on that side. But it seems like a fair compromise given that I'm gonna have the whole unit attached as one. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide, that's what it looks like underneath, by the way. I'm gonna go ahead and slide that back down. Uh, for this area right here, many people have mentioned that in the past, when you join the two units together, you get this gap right here in the front. Um, the solution for that is to take a piece of the chair like was shown in another video, you know, the part that goes on the base on the bottom underneath where the chair gets jacked up and down. And this particular piece was like the third tear down. I cut it off and then I shaped the piece right here. I'll give you the measurements for that piece in a minute to fill that gap. So this is gonna get inserted over here and it's gonna fill that space before I put the two units together permanently, which I'm gonna do right now. Okay, so for the piece that goes right between the two units, the X-Touch and the X-Touch extender, I, as I told you before, I used a piece of a bottom of a, a chair, an office chair, a little cover that goes over the stem that basically holds the chair to the base of the chair, the seat to the base of the chair. And if you flatten this out, it's pretty flexible stuff. If you get the 
same thing. These are the measurements that you'd have to use right here. So basically it's two and three quarter inches wide, it's three inches tall, and then you can see there's a one and a quarter inch tab on the top that's three quarter inches deep to the spacing. If you use that, those measurements and insert it just like that inside here, um, you'll have a nice clean look on the on the unit. See nothing at all there. Then the molding I used, I think I showed it to you before, but it's three quarter inch wide T molding. I got it on eBay for a very reasonable price, about ten dollars for about twelve feet or so. So that's what it looks like on top. That's what it looks like on bottom. Just so you can get an idea of it. And then the piece that I used was exactly 12 and a half inches long. That's the length of the piece needed to cover all the way across. Okay, I'm in the process of linking the two units through MIDI so that one is slave to the other. I'll be back with more information on that soon. This is the finished controller project. There's the two units tied together. Um, I, took, I took some measurements for you on the separator piece that goes right there. I don't know if you can see it very well, right between the two pieces. And also, I got you some specs for the T-molding that I use. It bends right around the back of the unit. So I got a nice, clean, neat look, a nice finish on it.